What's up guys, Christopher from Crisis Point and welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we'll be talking about the Poco X4 GT. Now I've been fortunate enough to use the F4 for quite some time, but in this video, since I've been using the Poco X4 GT extensively for the past few weeks now, I think it's about time that we talk about it. But of course, any smartphone review would not be complete without... <laughs> Creeping up from the heathens, got will, got fight, got pride, got reason. If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them. If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon. I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing. Take me for granted, and you know I'm leaving. I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving. I could take this crap from seeing to believing. Got a taste for blood, and my tongue keeps bleeding from the words I spit. So sharp, so freezing, so cold. Behold, frostbite, they feel. I could tear you apart or I could go heal them Don't believe in faith, don't believe in ceilings I just need a taste and my mind starts peeling I don't pace myself, I grind on kneeling Got lust for change, I just love the feeling uh. I ain't gonna give up Got too little time, I'ma live up Head down, push forward through the tough times Cause anything worth doing is a tough climb Alright, so this is the Poco X4 GT. This is what the majority of people have been calling the rebadged Redmi Note 11 uh, series smartphone that was released a few months ago in China, which is now known as the Poco X4 GT globally. Personally, I don't really care about the whole rebadged thing because at the end of the day, it is still a Poco X4 GT in the palm of my hands. That's it. So. Right off the gate, the first thing that I actually noticed when I started using the X4 GT is that it shows some resemblance with its older brother, which is the Poco F4 GT. And it's mainly with the feel in the hand. It has that same matte-like texture, but less the gamer aesthetic. One of the key elements that you will notice right off the bat is that it has a bit of weight to it. Not a lot though, but it is very noticeable that there's a certain heft when you're holding the phone one-handed. Towards the left, it's completely bare. On the right, we have a flush power button that doubles as a fingerprint scanner flanked by the volume rockers. Up top we have the IR blaster, the secondary microphone, the secondary speaker, and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is something you don't normally see in smartphones nowadays. Down at the bottom we have the primary microphone, the primary speaker, a USB type C port for charging and data transfer, and the SIM card tray that houses two nano SIM cards. No expandable memory here, sorry, but that's what we have to work with. Around back we have a triple camera configuration with a 64 4 megapixel primary lens, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro lens, along with an LED flash, which is capable to shoot video up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Probably, if there's anything to mention about the design of the Poco X4 GT, is its form factor. It's actually a lot narrower compared to the majority of smartphones in the market, so having to hold it one handed is very comfortable, plus the fact that it has a matte finish towards the back, so it doesn't actually feel a bit oily and greasy, especially during the humid weathers, if you know what I mean. The X4 GT comes with a 6.6 inch IPS LCD display with a 144Hz refresh rate that comes with MIUI 13 out of the box front and center. Now there are two storage configurations for the X4 GT, but the one that we have here is the 128GB storage variant. Now let's talk about the screen, because the screen is basically what you'll be interacting most of the time. The X4 GT has a 1080p screen. It is an IPS LCD panel, which can go up to 650 nits. It's not the brightest, and it was a bit of a challenge using this device in broad daylight, but indoors, it's not going to be a major problem. As a matter of fact, the screen, if you'll be using this indoors, is super beautiful. The colors are very accurate, it's a bit on the colder side as opposed to the Poco F4, and it's just a very enjoyable experience consuming content on the X4 GT. <laughs> Where the good? 
Now, as far as gaming is concerned, to be honest, there's not really much to talk about because the gaming experience that I encountered while playing Call of Duty Mobile on the Poco X4 GT is very identical with the Poco F4 GT. There is, however, a bit of a change in temperature after playing extensively for about 30 minutes to an hour, but it's not that striking to the point that the device gets hot. Especially if you'll be playing indoors in an air-conditioned room, then nothing to worry about. If you'll be outside, like under broad daylight of course, then that's a different scenario. Probably the biggest change, if let's say you're shifting from the Poco F4 GT to the X4 GT, is the pop-up triggers, which obviously is not available with the X4 GT variant. But other than that, the device itself, considering its price point, just runs like a flagship. This device can easily muscle out and put a lot of brands in the market to shame. Now as far as photography and videography is concerned with the Poco X4 GT, the overall experience is a bit of a mixed bag to be honest. There were some times where the photos would come out as how I intended, but in some cases it was out of focus, and same goes with the video department of the Poco X4 GT. Now a couple weeks ago, I took some time off in making all these videos and whatnot, and I decided to have a simple staycation at Sofitel. It's one of those four or five star hotels in Manila, Philippines, so if you'll be checking in pretty soon, then you might want to check it out. But before which, here are some sample photos taken and videos in Sofitel. Right, so, okay, so now let's talk about my verdict with the Poco X4 GT. In the grander scheme of things, right, as a consumer, you always look for what gives you the most value for your money. You don't want to be buying some bleeding edge technology that you cannot maximize. I mean, think about it. If you get an S21 Ultra or an S22 Ultra that has 100 times zoom, how often do you see yourself using that type of feature? Most often than not, it's going to be used for shooting the moon or stars, whatever. And that costs around $1,000. What you're looking for as a consumer, especially for anyone who's going to click this video, is the most value you can get for your money. The Pogo X4 GT is valued at around $350 to $400. Converted to Philippine Peso, you're looking at around 18 to 20,000 pesos. That's one fourth of how much a flagship smartphone in 2022 is. But despite the price point, the performance you'll be getting with the X4 GT is flagship grade. That is the turning point when buying a smartphone. And that is pretty much it for my review of the Poco X4 GT. This has been an awesome experience having to use this device for the past few weeks. I've won a lot of battles on the Call of Duty Mobile, had a bit of fun taking photos and the like, and the fact that I don't necessarily need to charge this device every day, it's just a blessing considering the price point. So if you're looking to get the Poco X4 GT, I'll drop the links in the description down below. But in the meantime, if you're still not decided, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more tech reviews and boxing videos. Thanks again for watching. This is Chris once again from Crisis Point and I'll catch you in the next.